Welcome back. We are now at John chapter 6, verse 32. Before the break, the people were asking Jesus, Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And this was in verse 31. And so, in essence, what they were saying is, Jesus, let us see you do something else. So, in other words, they were trying to marginalize Jesus. And in verse 32, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you. Verse 32, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And here, Jesus rebutted these people. But, of course, our Jesus is uh, not uh, 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 angry or angry fight in any manner. But to put them in their place, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread. This bread is temporal bread. This bread is physical bread. He did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father. You notice Jesus did not say our Father. He said my Father. And this was to let them know. I mean, if Jesus said our Father is to identify, identify include them all, but they are not yet. They are still unbelievers. This is between the Father and our Lord Jesus. So it's my. He speaks of the relationship between God the Father and the Son. So this is my Father gives, now gives, now gives, now gives. My Father gives you eternal life. Gives you the true bread from heaven. Not the temporal bread, but this is the true bread from heaven. It's is about eternal and spiritual nourishment. So in short, Jesus is the real manner. Jesus is the real thing. He is the manner that my Father now gives to you. This is the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He. For the bread of God is He. The bread of God is not it. It's not a thing, it's not the roti, it's not it, it is a person, it's he. The bread of God, it's he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. It is not the physical bread. This bread of heaven is he, is Jesus. And this bread is infinitely superior to the physical bread that they were referring to in verse 31 manna in the desert no this is bread which comes down from heaven which gives life it is not just giving food it is not about giving food it is about giving life they need life more than they need food and which gives life to the world eternal life and these people, let me say, they still did not get it. They still did not get it. And then they said to him, uh, Lord, give us this bread always. Give us this bread always. Give us this heavenly bread always. It reminds me of, uh, you know, the woman at the well. And when she heard what Jesus said, then she said, Sir, Give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. I'm tired of coming here every day at noon to draw water, uh, to quench my thirst. So if you give me this and I don't need to come, good, I'll be at home. So it is the same mentality as these people now before Jesus. And they said, fine, then give us this heavenly bread. Lord, give us this bread always. Moses only did it for 40 years, but Lord, you give us forever. That's what they were saying. They still did not get the truth. 
Verse 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And Jesus said to them, I am, which I showed to you just now in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And here in verse 35, the first part, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This is the first of seven that Jesus will declare of himself in this book of John. Uh, so what I have is this diagram. And so in John chapter 6, which we just read, I am the bread of life. And then as we go on uh, throughout this book, I'll show you the rest. And in all, he said this seven times. So this is the first, I am the bread of life. And in this verse 35, and in this verse 35, there are two things we must take note of. Number one, he said, he who comes to me. So, he is the bread of life. So, what is your response? So, he who comes to me. So, you must go to him. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And second thing is, he who believes in me shall never thirst. So, you must come to him and you must believe in him. Some people will come because they come for the gift but you must also believe in him some people come for for whatever reason to church but they don't believe in jesus so you must come and you must believe and you know he will sustain you forever you shall never hunger and never thirst again verse 36 but i say to you but i say to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe he was standing in front of them you have seen me i'm standing in front of, of you and yet you do not believe so this is the depravity of the human heart they just will not accept the truth because they want their own they have their own perspective they have their own idea of the Messiah, they were looking forward to a political Messiah, but they just will not accept the truth. If only they would study the, the scriptures and, and, and understand them, but they didn't. So like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders, and, and these uh, people, simple folks who know not much, and they just would not accept, despite all, I mean, these simple folks, okay, fine, you, you, you don't know the scriptures, but at least you will see the signs. This sign should point you to Christ. But yet, you have seen me and do not believe. Do not believe that Jesus is God. So Jesus went on in his teaching. So we come to verse 37. And he said, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Now, this is a very, very important verse. We, 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 I mean, as we started this book and we say it is simple uh, in, in the writing, but yet it is so profound. So in, even in this verse uh, 37, and uh, uh, yeah, in just this verse 37, we, we can break it down and you see God's sovereignty you see man's uh, responsibility and then you see Jesus' promise. How so? Let me show you on this diagram. Okay. We see the activity of the Father. We see the activity. That means something that is to be done. That's activity of the Father. We see the activity of the sinner, what you must do, and the activity of the Son. So let me read verse 37 again. All that the Father gives me. All that the Father gives me. So this is election. God has elected. God, I mean, He did not choose the four-legged animals and, and creatures and others, but men 
for God so loved the world. He loved men, for God so loved the world. So all that the Father gives me, all that the Father elected. So this is sovereign. God decides. Right? So we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Ephesians chapter 1. Where are we? Where are Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 5 Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as He chose us in Him. Who did the choosing? Choosing God. It is His sovereign choice, not man's decision. It's God. So God's sovereignty just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. That means your existence here on earth is not an accident. It was decided by God, His sovereign will, that we should be holy and be without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption, yeah, election, that's predestined, decide, decided by Him, predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of his will and that is election okay we we, we can also look at John uh, chapter 6 verse 44 John chapter 6 okay okay John chapter 6 verse 44 which we just read okay so we look instead at John chapter 17 verse 6 Jesus prayed before he was arrested in John chapter 17, I manifested your name to the man whom you have given me out of the world. Whom you, he was praying to who he was talking to God the Father, whom God the Father has given me, this God the Son. So who decided, whose sovereign choice is it? This is God the Father whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, Father. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Referring to the apostles. So, it is God's sovereign choice. So, as we have just read, back to, back to verse 37, All that the Father gives me, okay, will come to me. Will come to me. That is man's responsibility. You can choose to reject the gift. You can choose to reject the offer and don't come. But you must come. You must exercise that responsibility well. And so you must come to Jesus. And this is so well written by Paul in Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you must come to him, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. So this is coming to him. So back to John chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me. That is the, the, the responsibility of the believer. And the one who comes to me, and the one who believes in me, the one who believes in Christ, and what is the promise of the Son, the activity of the Son, I will by no means cast out. I will not. That is a promise from Jesus Christ. So we look at 2 Timothy Chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, 
and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The Lord knows those who are His. And we are sealed for Him. No one can take us from Him. And one more, 1 John 2, 19. The Lord knows who are His. 1 John 2, 19. Yes. Then they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So just now, in the prior verse, in 2 Timothy 2.19, God knows those who are His. And now in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, God knows also those who are not His. So, those who are His will remain His. So in short, let me, let me just, even as I go back to this slide, yeah, Jesus promised. So you see, even as we, we, we look at this whole verse, we can say, the devil cannot prevent an elect person from going to Jesus. And the devil can also not take an elect from Jesus. God had said, no one can snatch you out of his hand. No one. But if you so decide to crawl away from his hand, from his palm, you so decide to reject him and turn away from him, deny him, like the Jews did even in the Old Testament, then, then it is your choice. You have chosen to walk away from him. Your eternal security is not sure, is not assured. There is no eternal security for you if you choose to walk away. But if you remain in him, he will remain in you so this is the beauty of john 3 chapter 6 verse 37 and i know my responsibility is just responding and not only responding but remaining in him and serving him and walking in righteousness i know jesus will keep his promise because he will he knows who are his and you are His, I am His, and we will remain His. So, God has chosen you, and you must choose Him. It is your free will, you must choose Him. And then, you, are, you shall remain the chosen ones. If you do not walk away. So, we go back to John chapter 6. Verse 38, verse 34, where are we? Okay, let me just read. Okay, verse 38, for I have come, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will but the will of him who sent me the will of the father who sent me this is the will of the father who sent me so that all of all he has given me that i should lose nothing of all he has given me i should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day. You know, the word should, the word should is you should be there, but you may not be there, right? Because some people will walk away. Some people will fall away. Even in the last days, some elect will fall away. So of all that he has given me, I should lose nothing. God the Father gave, elected the whole world, but many chose to reject. 
and some have accepted and then subsequently also reject. So that's why Jesus said, Of all that he has given me, that I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Now we have covered this uh, uh, even in previous lessons. Yeah, so I I think the last lesson. So I won't spend too much time here. But you know, this is the resurrection of Jesus Christ after after he was uh, uh, killed, he was crucified on the third day. He was resurrected. So this is the first. So this is the resurrection of Christ, the first fruit. And then we have the church age, and then we are all waiting for the rapture when we will all be caught up. So this is the second stage, the resurrection and translation of the church into mid air, to meet Christ and to be with Him forever. Then there will be a tribulation. So at the end of the seven years tribulation, then the tribulation saints and Old Testament saints will be resurrected and to rule and reign with Christ for the 1,000 years. Okay, so this is what Jesus was referring to here even in verse 40. Verse 39. Okay, this is the will of the Father who sent me that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. So this is the one. Okay. Uh, but the last day for the church is this. If you, if you and I are members of the church, then our last day will be the last day of the church age. We will be raptured here. But for the resurrection uh, uh, but for the tribulation martyrs and the Old Testament saints, their last day will be here where Jesus will raise them up to rule and reign for the 1,000 years. Okay? So, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of Him who sent me. Verse 40. And this is the will of Him who sent me. Me. You see, Jesus' emphasis, it is not my will, it is the Father's will. And he kept repeating in, in verse 38, 39, and even now verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him. So it is a continual thing. It's not just once, but to, to keep your eyes focused on him, to, to have your hearts and your mind directed towards Christ, looking unto Him who sees the Son and believe, continue to believe in Him, may have everlasting life and I will raise Him up at the last day. This is so key. This is talking about the security, the eternal security. So if you want to look at the eternal security, you just Look at what we read just now, verse 37, right? Jesus said, verse 37, I will by no means cast them out, right? So that's one. Wow, I'm assured. He will by no means cast me out. And then you go on to the next one, verse 39. I should lose nothing. So none of you shall be lost. If you stay with me, you will not be lost. He will not lose you. Okay, he's the great shepherd. And then, one more. And then he said, You will have everlasting life. You will have everlasting life. So, he will not throw me out. He will not be careless and, and lose me. And he will give me everlasting life. You know what is that? All this point to eternal security in Christ Jesus. And we are so blessed even to have been called and chosen and in short, safe. And not only that, we thought that's it. But you read the last part. Not only have everlasting life, your everlasting life starts when? The moment you accept Christ. If you receive Christ today, your everlasting life starts today. But He will raise you up at the last day. He will raise you up at the last day. And this is, if you're part of the church, 
it is that rapture if you're part of the the tribulation and you survive or whatever if you die if you are a martyr he will also raise you up then and so this is eternal security four things he will not throw me out he will not lose me he will give me everlasting life from now and then eventually he will raise me up so all this teaching if you would learn it meditate upon it and understand it it'll be so it will really set you free and not be so entangled by the laws and the requirements and the things you 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 want to do to be saved all you need to do is just believe but unfortunately not a great sentence structure but unfortunately i should just say unfortunately the religious leaders did not agree to jesus theology and we see this in verse 41 the jews who are this the religious leaders then complain about him because he said i am the bread which came down from heaven they cannot accept this they cannot accept that jesus is god these religious leaders their response was complaining murmuring so this is from verse 41 to verse 51 they were murmuring that jesus said i am the bread which came down from heaven it cannot be because we know his parents his parents are from nazareth they are on earth how can he the son of joseph and mary be from heaven they just cannot accept that they cannot accept the virgin birth but this was already prophesied in, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, about the virgin birth, right? You know that verse quite well. So, I am the bread which came down from heaven. He stepped down from the throne of heaven to come down so that he can ascend the cross for us. And that's what Jesus did. Verse 42, and they said, is not this jesus the son of joseph whose father and mother we know how is it then that he says i have come down from heaven so if jesus had said that i have i come from nazareth they would be happy with him they receive him but he said i come down from heaven and they find it difficult difficult even though the verse in isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 spoke about prophesies about a virgin birth and they just rejected Christ verse 43 Jesus therefore answered and said to them do not murmur because murmuring they were murmuring murmuring um, uh, against God do not murmur amongst yourselves no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So, you know, Jesus is just emphasizing and repeating, but these people were just dull of mind or, and heart of heart. They just refuse to accept. So Jesus is saying, Don't stop grumbling, stop murmuring. Again, uh, it is not about human ability because in verse 44, no one can. So it is a human inability. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. This is sovereign, which we just studied in John chapter 6, verse 37. This is the sovereign, unless the Father who sent me, unless the Father draws him, it is election divine. And you know, everyone is uh, uh, elected. It is whether you, ex you, you accept that election, whether you will accept that gift. I mean, you can be elected, but you choose not to. So, unless the father who sent me draws him and this person with the desire the inclination and he comes to christ and he believes in christ 
Then Jesus said, I will raise him up at the last day. So again, if you are of the church, you'll be at the rapture. If you're of the tribulation, after the tribulation, it will be either as the martyr or the Old Testament saints. Verse 45, it is written, and it's always, and Jesus will always point them back to the word because whatever Jesus said and his being here and all the things he had done, they were all prophesied in the Old Testament by the prophets. And they shall all be taught by God. Now, you notice not taught by men now. Because in the church age, after Jesus has gone back, the Holy Spirit will come. And then the Holy Spirit will teach. And they shall all be taught by God. And God draws them. What Jesus is saying is God will draw them by His word. God will draw you and I by His Word. So it's so critical and so important that we stay in the Word, that we remain drawn to Him and remain in Him. And they shall be taught by Him. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned, you know, you know the word and? That means they come together. Hey, everyone who has heard and this is Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So you must hear the word of God. You, you must share with people. You must preach to them. You must teach them. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. The problem is a lot of people don't want to hear. They don't want to read. So they are actually spiritually ignorant, illiterate spiritually. Therefore, everyone who has heard, and not only here, but you must also learn. So what you are doing every Saturday in this class, you are not only hearing, but you are also learning. So some people want to read the Bible from cover to cover all in one month, or three months, or half a year, or go through the Bible four times in one year. For what? You, you must learn, not just read. So who has heard, and learn from the Father. And if you have done that, it will come. Once you have learned, you will come. So we look at a couple of verses. Isaiah 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. This is pointing to the future, surely. Because under the law, and so they will all be taught by the rabbi. They go to the synagogue and so on. But the day will come when God will write the law in the hearts of the people. And they shall be taught by the Lord. And the result of which is peace. And great shall be the peace of your children. So we look at... Jeremiah chapter 31 Jeremiah chapter 31 31 verse 34 No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I shall remember no more. How will this be? Verse 33. So, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And who will be teaching them? God, the Holy Spirit. And then you look at verse 34. No man shall need to teach his neighbor and say, Know the Lord, know the Lord. And because from the least to the greatest, they will know God. They shall all know me. And so this, when it was written in Jeremiah, is in the past but pointing to the future. 
and Jesus is just confirming that even as he spoke to these people in John chapter 6 verse 45 okay it is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by God therefore everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So again, it is an individual decision and an individual responsibility. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, again, it is continual belief, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I mentioned this last week, but good to emphasize again. He who believes in me will have everlasting. No, no, no. It's not the day you die, then you have everlasting life. Has, that means from now, now, present. Has everlasting life. Verse 48, I am the bread of life. I am better, I'm superior than the, than the manner. I am the bread of life life your father ate your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead they ate the manna daily in the wilderness and they are dead it's only temporal and by the way manna means what is it this is the bread of life so jesus was doing a contrast because earlier earlier in verse 30 uh, one, they were saying, you know, he gave them bread and, and basically telling Jesus, okay, you know, uh, he gave us bread for 40 years in the desert. What can you do for us? Jesus is saying, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. But this is the bread of life. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. This will be eternal life. So, this word eat is just once. Okay? It is in the in the heat in the Greek where it means the event or the activity occurring only once. So just eat once. That one may eat of it and not die. Why? Because you will have eternal life. This bread of life will give you eternal life. Verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So Jesus was revealing to them, telling them that this flesh that he will give is his sacrifice. He will lay down his life for us. He was pointing to his sacrifice and the bread that I shall give is my life which I shall give for the life of this world. So Jesus is very good at this. He used physical things to, to, to illustrate spiritual things and he was teaching spiritual truth using physical objects. But the Jews did not get it. They just did not get it. Verse 52 to 57, you see them striving. The Jews therefore quarrel among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They, they, they misunderstood him because they don't know him. And they don't know him because they don't know the Father. If you know the Father, you know the Son. But they did not know him they misunderstood him how can this man give us his flesh to eat of course of course in judaism it is forbidden to eat blood and definitely uh, cannibalism is not uh, uh, accepted it's not allowed verse 53 then jesus said to them most assuredly i say to you unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. 
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Now, question. Is Jesus talking about Holy Communion? Is Jesus talking about Holy Communion? He is not. But some teachers, unfortunately, uh, uh, re- uh, point this, say this points to Holy Communion. It is not. Holy Communion is for believers. This is for unbelievers. He was talking to unbelievers. Holy Communion is for believers. Holy Communion uh, points towards death. Points towards death, identifying and remembering uh, what Christ had done for us in his death and in, in his sacrifice. But what Jesus is teaching them now, it's about life. Okay? And he was using physical things to teach them spiritual truth. And to eat the flesh and to drink the blood is to have Christ in you. Let me say again, to eat the flesh and to drink his blood not literally is to have spiritually to have Christ in you so it is about salvation this is about salvation it is about believing in Christ most assuredly I say to you unless you eat and this is once this word is once just eat once the flesh of the son of man and how do you do this what does this require? This is believing in Christ. Believing in Jesus' death. Flesh, flesh speaks of you know, the person having uh, died. So you eat the flesh. This is to believe in Jesus' death. And drink. Drink what? Drink once. Again, the word in Greek means once. And to drink, not literally, but spiritually. Yeah. Unless you do this, you believe in Christ, you have no life in you. So whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, that means whoever has Christ in him, has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day, which I already mentioned, you know, uh, at the rapture or at the end of the tribulation. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood that means continually remaining in him having christ in you abides in me i mentioned at the beginning of this course abides in me means what salvation abides in jesus christ means salvation and i in him and christ in you is what sanctification with him in you with god the holy spirit in you he is regenerating you cleansing you and 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 working in and through you that is sanctification verse 57 as the living as the living father sent me and i live because of the father so he who feeds on me will live because of me so you see the life connection the life con- it is not a dead god it is not an idol it's not a stone it's not a wooden sculpture but as the living father has sent me so father god is alive and i live because of the father so if you feed on me i'm not dead god the father is not dead i'm not dead so if you feed on me so if you depend on me you trust in me you will live because of me so you see the life connection you jesus and the father because he god the father is the source of everything verse 58 this is the bread which came down from heaven not as your father ate the manna and are dead he who eats this bread will live forever you notice Jesus teaching, he will emphasize, he will go back, he will say the same thing because repetition is the mother of learning, of education. So even as teachers and as uh, preachers, whatever, 
it is okay to remain uh, on the subject and, and to repeat it so that people will understand. And he has been talking about this since they asked him in verse 31 about the bread, about the manna. So now we come to the last part, the last subsection of this section. It's about departing and it's about words uh, from verse 59 all the way to 71. It is about departing or it's about words. Uh, but here we will see disciples leaving him. So let's look at verse 59. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? This is a hard saying. They find it difficult. I mean, Jesus came from heaven, a virgin birth, and then uh, now to tell me to eat his flesh, to drink his blood. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you just look at verse 58, it's probably that which really stumbled them. I mean, the rest are all pointing to this, but verse 58, just summarize everything that Jesus had taught. This is the bread. What I've been telling you is, I am the bread of life. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna, as you mentioned in verse 31. And I did. He who eats this bread will live forever. Wow. Head scratching, hair pulling. What, what is he saying? They misunderstood him again still. And of course, people of the flesh will not discern spiritual things. That is, so they must believe, then they will see. If they want to see and then believe, that is not faith. So they remain in that condition. They misunderstood. And so to, to them, this word, this word from Jesus uh, is an offense. How so? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this. So, not, not, just the, not, not, not about the twelve, but there are others around, other disciples. When Jesus knew in himself, he knew, yeah, John 2, 25, that his disciples complained, grumbled about this. He said to them, so this, these words offended them. So, uh, in this section, if I can even divide this further, words of offense from verse 59 to 61. And he said to them, Does this offend you? Are you stumbled? Jesus is saying, Are you stumbled? Verse 62, What then, what then, if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? I tell you all this, I came down from heaven, I'm the bread of life, you know, you, 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 you must have me in you, you know, by eating of the flesh and drinking of the blood spiritually. And you, 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 you cannot accept, you don't understand. If I tell you, one after this, uh, uh, in, in a few months' time, I shall be, maybe in, in less than a year's time, I shall ascend back to heaven. You will really, really uh, be lost. You really will not comprehend. So, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? Where was he before? Heaven. So, I'm going back. And from verse 62 to 65, Jesus was giving them the words of the Spirit. Verse 63, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are Spirit and they are life. So, because they, they are trying to digest, trying to understand how to eat and drink. Eat the flesh and drink the blood. So Jesus is coming to that. Because he first tell them the flesh profits nothing. Yeah, you of the flesh, you can't discern spiritual things. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Verse 64, but there are some of you who do not believe. Who do not believe. You choose not to believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning they were who they were who did not believe and who would betray him now if you come to him with a closed mind and a closed heart no no one can help you, you the door is under your control you must open the door of your heart 
But if you have got prejudices, you refuse to, to learn new things and have revelation, then no one can help you. I mean, the Word of God is so beautiful. If you would just digest it and eat it, like in Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah 15, 16. And I ate them. So, you are, Jesus is the word. And you eat the word. Not literally, not tear your pages and, and eat them, but you eat the word. And so you have Christ in you. That's what Jesus was trying to tell them. Teach them. So the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But some of you who do not believe, but there are some of you who do not believe. And Jesus is omniscient and he knows those who do not believe. Okay, so we go to verse 64. Right. Let me read verse uh, 64, the second part again. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. So who did not believe, that is in the past, but he also knows going forward the future, who would betray him. Of course, we know Judas. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no man can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Which we have been studying earlier about uh, election. So you have verse 37, you have got uh, verse 45, and now here, even in verse 65, unless it has been granted to him by my Father. And then we come to verse 66. From that time, from the, but before then, let me say, therefore I have said to you that no one, so the unbeliever, referring to the unbeliever, this, this it, 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 even as you read this, it points to the unbeliever. Therefore that, no unbeliever can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. So verse 66, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And who are these? These are the backsliders. These are the people who cannot accept. To them it is a hard saying, but they are hard of heart and dull of mind that they refuse to Accept truth. There is no room for other, other things to occupy them. They have already decided. They are so fixated. They are so stubborn. So they refuse to change. They refuse to believe. They refuse to come. And so they decided to go back. Go back to their old life. Go back to their old religion. Yeah. Because they were attracted by, by, by physical benefits. They were attracted by the meal and the signs that they have seen. But now for them to do a bit more, oh no, they decided to go back and walk with him no more. And you know, Jesus lost them with one sermon. Imagine if you are preaching in church on a Sunday and then you, you preach a certain message and then half or more of the congregation just walk out. You lost them. And I just want to say about verse 66. This is John chapter 6, verse 66. And they went back and walked with him no more. 666. Six, six. Men's number. And men went back to his old way. Verse 67. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? Do you also want to go away? 67, verse six, he said to the 12, this is the first time in John's book that he used the word 12, referring to the 12. Okay. 
I mean, these are not important things, but I thought since we are students, some of the things I, I, I can point out to you. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter, but Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go away? And here we are in this third section, third subsection here. And these are the words of confession. So we have the words of offense from verse 59 to 61. And then we got words of spirit, verse 62 to 65. And now we are at the words of confession, verse 66 to 69. So Peter confessed. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this is just simply wonderful. This is simply wonderful from the mouth of the spokesman of the group of apostles. And he had said this. He had said this in Matthew 16 at the at the miracle and the miracle of the feeding of the five no he said this at Caesarea Philippi I think this was uh, Matthew chapter 14 oh let me see Matthew 16 yes Matthew 16. In Matthew 16 at Caesarea Philippi, when Jesus asked them, you know, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And here again, here again he said, but Lord, where shall we go? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe we have come to believe not come to see we have come to believe and know not only believing but know as well we have come to believe and know that you are the christ the son of the living god one of the best things that came out from the mouth of peter but there was a mistake there was an assumption he made a wrong assumption he assumed because he said where shall we go he was including all the 12 everyone including judas in the team and judas must be such a great deceiver he is under great camouflage he hid himself very well that even the the other 11 apostles with him did not suspect that he was to betray jesus so he included everyone to whom shall we go but from this verse 68 and 69 we know peter had saving faith then we come to verse 71 verse 70 and 71 uh, these are words of sovereignty verse 70 to 71 words of sovereignty Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, did I not choose you? Yes, Jesus did after an overnight prayer, he chose but he would only do what his father in heaven tells him to do what he sees his father in heaven do he will do and jesus after his communion with the father he chose the twelve did i not choose you yes and one of you is a devil now this devil is not referring to satan this is just uh, the, a word for accuser, adversary, enemy. Yeah. And he did not mention Judah's name. But 
Judas in the group would know that Jesus was referring to him. And this was a great opportunity for Judas to repent, to come, uh, come forth uh, in, in, in honesty, with transparency, and, and confess and admit and repent. But he did not. He did not. Everyone has a choice in life. It is his or her responsibility. And Judas chose otherwise. And one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Now to talk about uh, why uh, uh, si I mean why why uh, Judas fall into this plan and is included in, in this and he, he would betray and yet he's still one of the twelve uh, that is a subject uh, for another day but with verse seventy one and verse seventy and verse seventy one we thank God that uh, he has chosen us and we have chosen him and we have come to him and we have believed in him and we shall see even greater things than what we have learned so far from the pages of the bible so father we thank you so much for the he for the manner this day that you have given to us even as we studied John chapter 6. Indeed, even as you ministered to the multitude, you fed the 5,000. Lord, continue to feed us daily, even as we continue to abide in you. Lord, we will always have Christ in us. For we will always uh, rest our trust and our faith in you that through all circumstances, in the storms of life, I know, Lord, according to your time, you will deliver us. And we look forward to the day when you will come suddenly and you will take us to the shore of heaven in an instant. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.